What's going on everyone? I'm Jabari K. Smith and you're experiencing the professional athlete. Now on today's episode, got a special guest, UCLA Bruins own Jonathan Franklin. We're going to talk about today how he was able to navigate through the inner city of South Central Los Angeles. We're going to talk about football, of course. We're going to talk about business, but most importantly, we're going to talk about life. So let's go. I got my man Jonathan Franklin with me. What's going on with you? How you doing, brother? Happy to be here. Man, I'm glad that you're here. Definitely. So share with everybody, man. Tell, tell everyone who you are, man. What's your story? Absolutely. So Jonathan Franklin, mm-hmm. as you mentioned, uh, grew up in South Central Los Angeles, yeah. uh, attended Dorsey High School, yeah. um, student athlete, yeah. chose to play football because in a sense it was an escape from the situations that I grew up in. Whether Absolutely. Whether that's family or just around the neighborhood. And from that, I gave my all to the yeah. game of football where in a sense it became my identity and who it was. Absolutely. Um, to, Give me that freedom yeah. throughout that and and from playing football and working hard i was blessed to receive a scholarship to go to ucla yeah attended ucla um after graduating from dorsey and majored in political science wow. that came about from yeah. having an opportunity to intern with mayor Anto- antonio villa Urgosa awesome. um, during my sophomore year at ucla and gave me aspirations of one day becoming the mayor of la and wow. nicknamed the mayor uh, graduating ucla blessed breaking four records becoming an all-time leading rusher um, from there, drafted by the Green Bay Packers, um, forced to med- medically retire during my time there. Yeah. Um, came back to work t- with the organization after I retired, mm-hmm. went on to the University of Notre Dame, and now I'm back with the Los Angeles Rams. So quite a journey of inner yeah, city kid yeah, and, and yeah. coming full circle and, back and, home, but it's been great. And the story's still being written. Absolutely. So share with us, I mean, football was your, was your choice of sport. At what age did you realize, hey, football is going to be the vehicle that takes me to where you are now? I would say my my sophomore year, I'll tell you a quick story about, um, man, the power of choices. Mm -hmm. Um, So I I recall a Friday night when I was at Dorsey, it was my sophomore year, and one of my good friends, Larry, gave me a call. And uh, he he asked me to come out, you know, that night um, due to a strict mom and Mm film the next morning. I wasn't able to go. So what Larry did, he called one of our other friends, Howard. So Larry and Howard went out on a night um, to this party. And at that party, they got into an interaction with this this one gentleman. Mm -hmm going back and forth, fussing, pushing and shoving, and eventually they got into a fight. Mm -hmm. Um, As that went on and and began to increase, that that gentleman put out a gun and shot both Larry and Howard. Mm -hmm. Um, Later that night, they were both pronounced dead. Wow. Reflect that night, that could have been me. Right. And as I realized and heard that the next morning, I knew that I could not get caught up into that situation. Right. From from being cool or or just being caught up in that neighborhood aspect. So dreams are possible. And, And... well, not me realize, help everyone else right, in my neighborhood absolutely. realize dreams are possible with the platform that I had. So I just gave my all to the game, and, and it's truly been a blessing in disguise ever since. Definitely. You know, speaking of, of that, you know, you coming from the inner city, I'm pretty sure that everyone is familiar with South Central and the, and the dynamics that come with that. I mean, how were you able to stay focused and still navigate with all those distractions? Absolutely. One, I believe I just had a praying and strong mother, yeah. you know, to, to just stay on me and yeah. be strict. But also, I, I was developed to I was blessed to have a great mentor as well by the name of Martin Ludlow um, and he just spoke worth mm. into me and helped me see beyond I, as I saw myself at the time you Absolutely. know and him just speaking life into me I was blessed to be able to speak it into myself right and as I start speaking it to myself start believing it and walking in it Absolutely. as I know and as I learned to become and more than just a guy in a neighborhood or more than just an inner city city exactly. kid you know I live with worth and exactly. passion and purpose exactly so at those early stages you realize like hey I'm not going to be a product of my environment I'm not going to be a statistic I'm different I can write my own chapter and that was pretty much during that time that you kind of had that realization of yourself correct absolutely and mm-hmm. then I would just I got to the point where I was tired of seeing the same people fall victim yeah. of the neighborhood or fall victim of the the box that they live in within their minds or mm-hmm. in their situations and I told myself I got to break this barrier mm-hmm. I have to and I got to remove the barrier you know Absolutely. which is why I just stay focused you know I'm on this platform and the one that's on the platform not just do I have to get out the neighborhood I got to show that you you could do it the right way Absolutely. by being a good man you know yeah. by being loyal you know by by mm-hmm. by just carrying yourself in the right way you ain't got to be tough you ain't got to be super cool you just have to be you be you and as long as you be you then that's all you need to be. Nah, you're absolutely right. And we can both attest to that. And even though we're, we're grown men, it's still sometimes hard to be 
you because we look at other people and be like, whoa, I wouldn't mind being like this person. Right. But that's their journey. That's right. the shoes they got to put on. We need to learn how to master, you know, the shoes that we're walking in. And it's interesting that you were able to identify that at such a young age. So I hope that, you know, the young listeners and the young viewers that are watching this, they can see he, even at this early stages of your life, you can still build your own identity. And speaking of identity, how did you perceive yourself in the community? You know, as as Jonathan Franklin, the, the football player. Yeah, um, you know, and, and we'll probably get into the, this later. I didn't see myself outside of football until my injury at Green Bay. Mm. You know, but as, as a young man, mm. I was this football player, this man that rose out the yep, inner city, yep. and I embraced that. Yeah, you know, yeah, I made yeah. some good and bad choices, <laughs> and maybe had a little too much fun at certain times. But I understood the role I had to play okay. of being positive and even having that internship, you know, with mm -hmm. the mayor, you know, and and just be versatile in everything that I did, you know, yeah. speak, speaking eloquently, you know, yeah. our, our understanding how to hold myself in a diverse crowd, Absolutely. And, and, you know, and, and, and understanding different cultures. So I, I did my best to just be adaptable okay. in every situation and be that light and be that role model, you know, to show it can be done. Absolutely. So my, my other question why UCLA? I mean, because out of high school, you were heavily recruited. Right. And you pretty much could have had to pick it a litter as far as in um, schools, but right. you decided to go <laughs> up the street. Why? Right. Uh, it was amazing. So myself, along with six, seven other guys um, mm -hmm. within the L.A. region, was being recruited by UCLA at the time. Okay. And we began to build a relationship. Another guy who was on my team, Raheem Moore, mm -hmm. was along of the, of the list. And I recall we were all sitting at UCLA one, one, one evening, and the coach was talking to us about his vision in, in the future. And I believe that was Rick Neuheisel at the time. And after that meeting, we all sat in that room and was like, mm -hmm. man, let's turn UCLA around. Mm -hmm. And let's all commit and let's all make a difference and take it to the top. So that was a huge reason, um, honestly, that, that I chose. And also from football wise and academically, you know, UCLA is one of the top universities to go, go to. And I knew attending there and, and graduating, um, I'll definitely be blessed regardless which way I went. Absolutely. So you're here at one of the most prestigious schools in, in the world, UCLA. You're playing football for a remarkable program. How was that experience? <laughs> it, it was phenomenal, you know, but it was a lot of lessons. Yeah. You know, I, I reflect on my journey at UCLA. I entered UCLA as a safety. Mm. Um, and then um, I told the coach that I wanted to play running back. Wow. You know, moved to running back, six on the depth chart. Right. I remember Carl getting one rep, you know, every practice and going from six on the depth chart to yeah. starting my freshman year. Having my job, losing it, winning it back, and, and you know, blessed to you know break records at UCLA, and then outside of football, just figuring out who I am. Yeah. From faith-wise, from a person, from yeah. partying, from living life, it was just so many different dynamics that was happening. You know, yeah. all in a few years or even one year. So um, it was a lot of challenges, mm -hmm. um, opportunities to grow as a young man, yeah. figure out who I was, what I was standing for, and living for. Absolutely. Um, so I, I wouldn't change it at all. Absolutely. So, I mean, how were you navigating through UCLA? I mean, even though it's right up the street, it's a totally new environment. I mean, it's culturally diverse. It's in a different area of the city. Like, how were you able to adapt to that new scenery? It was tough. You know, even I grew up in the inner city where, yeah. you know, you, you talk about African-Americans and, and the Latino, mm -hmm. you know, you know, um, di you know, demographic. Mm -hmm. And going to UCLA, you have all types of different nationalities. Absolutely. I didn't know how to speak to someone of a Caucasian or Asian, yeah, you know, and you know, are, are those are out. And I was nervous. Yeah. You know, I stayed comfortable with the football players when I first got to UCLA. Yeah, yeah. And I had to learn to, one, accept people for who they are, mm -hmm. because I was very judgmental at the time. Mm -hmm. And people talk different from me, act different, you know, um, drove ex whatever car they drove. Um, mm -hmm. But I had to learn that we all have our different paths and journeys and we are who we are because of that. Absolutely. You know? So it took me a while to step back and I said, accept people for who they are, but in all, and be comfortable in myself to step out of, outside of my box mm -hmm. and comfort zone. Absolutely. You know, to be able to have those conversations with yeah. those that didn't look like me and Absolutely. talk like me. And I've learned it's been one of the greatest experiences, you know, thus far. Once you like commit to something like that, you know, the, what ha the response to that is, is one of the best experiences that you have. I mean, I can attest to this as well. I was exposed to a culturally diverse environment at early ages of 13. I got the opportunity to attend a boarding school and literally my first roommate was from South Korea. Mm. My next one was from Pakistan. So wow. it's like, you know, 
being comfortably uncomfortable. Exactly. It's like, hey, I know who I am and my identity. This seems different, but how do I blend in? How do I not only accept people, but how do I present myself in a manner for people to accept me? Correct. And it's a challenge, but <laughs> once you learn how to do that, it's a tool, it's a gift it's a because, I mean, I'm from the inner city as well, this world is so diverse. There's so right. many more people in this world that you can, you know, get, form meaningful relationships with and, and just learn from. And once you you kind of open that that eye to, to be exposed to that, your life changes. And I think maybe that's something you can attest to. Completely agree. Definitely, definitely. So you're at UCLA, man, had a heck of a career there, and now you're preparing for the NFL. I mean, how was that transition? <laughs> it, it was phenomenal. Um, I mean, this is my dream. My sophomore year in high school mm -hmm. was right there in front of me. Um, coming off a, a, a very blessed, you know, senior year at UCLA, and mm -hmm. it's about business now. Yeah, you know, um, and, and I, I keep you. I'm gonna keep saying this word. I had great mentors mm -hmm. that guided me to prepare the right way, mm -hmm. you know, and, and to tell me the tools that I needed, you know, to get in shape or have, you know, speak the right way for interviews mm -hmm. or to talk to the right people mm -hmm. to get to that level. Wow. How did you handle, you know? being in a fishbowl. I mean, here you are. I mean, you're, you're a hometown hero. Everybody's rooting on you to win. I mean, you're literally the Cinderella story. It's not too many times that, you know, people from our background get those opportunities. So now you're dealing with pressure. You're dealing with, um, you know, th those lights are bright at that level. I mean, we're talking about the NFL. How are you able to maneuver with all of that? Still keep your circle intact, but still stay focused? What, how I would say this is personally my faith. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I understood from falling down okay. and, and failures that I had to figure out what I was living for. Okay. You know, and when I came about in my faith, I realized that it wasn't about being accepted or the money or the fast cars or the girls that I was living for. It's about being a role model Absolutely. and living for, and, you know, we all have our different, you know, things that we're living for, living for a higher power. Mm -hmm. Whereas it was important to just be genuine and be authentic, you know, and to pour into people, you Absolutely. know, and, and just look at myself as a blessed man that has an opportunity to be where I am and never better than anyone else. So Absolutely. that was my focus, just being better, you okay. know, and making the right choices. It wasn't no pressure or being led, you know, astray mm -hmm. by anything. I just had a vision and I knew that I was called to do something. Absolutely, I totally understand that. So now you're in the NFL. Dream has came to fruition. <laughs> you're playing, you have an injury. Walk us through, what was going on with you mentally and emotionally? Right, I, I'll tell you the story, man. It is, you talk about the expecting, uh, I mean, the unexpected happening. Absolutely. So I leave UCLA all-time leading rusher my, i'm on a high cloud yeah get to green bay sponsored by adidas got my own car by ford own radio show and it was week three we're playing the cincinnati Bengals. the week before eddie lacy goes down mm -hmm. um, from a concussion he's out james stark goes in the game as a starting running back the second to last play he's hurt we go into halftime coach mike mccarthy comes up to me jay frank it's your time to shine yeah. you know, i'm ready you yeah. know I go in the game, run for 100 yards, score a touchdown. Mm -hmm. Most yards ever by a rookie in the game in Green Bay Packer history. Wow. I think I made it. Right. I'm going to be in the NFL for it's years. It's like the rest is history. Right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know that one play, that one game. Yeah. Fast forward to week 12. It's the first play, first quarter. I'm standing two yards in the back of the end zone waiting for the first kick. The ball is kicked. I catch it. I run to the 5, 10, 15, 20. I'm hit right on the crown of my helmet. Mm -hmm. The ball comes out, fumble. I'm laying on the ground, I know I gotta go pick it up, right? Mm -hmm. I attempt to go pick the ball up and I'm completely paralyzed from my neck down. I couldn't wow. move an inch. So many thoughts yeah. went on in my mind. Right. Will I ever move again? What happens next? Am I just knocked out unconscious? Yeah. You know? Eventually I get my feelings back, jog to the sideline. The doctors, you know, send me into the locker room. I look back on the field and that was my last time looking back as a Green Bay Packer player. Wow. I was forced to med med medically retire that following June due to a spinal contusion in my C1, C2 zone. You talk about a loss of the game, identity, yeah. the purpose of yeah. who I was in all sense of why to work out anymore, what am I working out for, how long, what is my goal? What's the new motivation? Right, right, absolutely. Yeah. Where am I getting my confidence from? I mean, life completely changed, you know, for that, that moment, you know, after the injury. Wow. I mean, that's got to be a terrifying experience. I mean, like my injury, I mean, not injury, but my career didn't end through injury. It was just, you know, didn't make the cut. But to know that, hey, I'm good enough. I still have right. what it takes. 
but something that we know happens in sports happen. It's like, why me? Right. I mean, how are you? How were you able to deal with something like that during that time? Yeah, um, you know, I heard a story um, once, and I was headed to the Facebook Instagram headquarters at the time with a few players right after I got hurt. Mm -hmm. And I recall a, a gentleman, he asked a question. We were walking by and we saw a homeless man laying on a cardboard box. Mm -hmm. And he asked a question, he was like, how do you think he ended there? You know, wow. he asked me and I said, um, I don't know, he probably just made some bad choices. Right. And he said, no, I don't think that. He said, I think life happened. I said, mm -hmm. well, what do you mean life happened? He said, I believe this homeless man probably had dreams, yeah. goals, aspirations that he felt like he belonged to something Absolutely. at one point in life. He woke up excited. Yeah. You know, he, 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 he wanted to conquer the world. But it came a situation in his life that took all that away. It was bigger than every dream that he had. It was bigger than everything he belonged to. And it forced him to give up and stop living for something, stop living for himself. All right. And as he said that, I started to reflect and I thought life was happening to me. Mm. Where I lost everything. And later on that afternoon, that evening, when I was in my hotel room, I found a letter. And it said, I am Jonathan Franklin. And on that letter, I started talking about who I was, like, I love the community. I wanna make a difference. I'm strong, I could accomplish anything. Yeah. Never, where, never, never on that letter or that paper did I ever see, I am just a football player. Wow. And that letter, I put it up in my room and I start speaking those words every day in my life that right. I'm gonna be a conqueror, that I'm gonna make a difference. And as I said earlier, I start speaking it mm -hmm. and believing it and walking in that. And yeah, it was tough at first. Yeah. You know, I was speaking things, but I was feeling different you know, inside. Yeah. But as time moves on, something in your mind you could definitely make a difference so I just changed my perspective on my life where I have a story for a reason and I am where I am for a reason so those moments you know right. and just speaking life and surrounding myself with positive people helped me make that transition was it hard yes was I depressed yes did I cry yes was I lost absolutely right. but I overcame it right and it took some time but I, I was able to do it from just a power of words and a power of just people in my life Man, that's that's amazing, man. <laughs> um, I, I hope that you know the viewers that are watching this, they can see you know the level of one focus, determination, but just the faith and, and, and just yourself and knowing that at the end of the day you're going to be okay. Right. And that's that's tremendous because as athletes we already have what it takes. The moment we we lace up our, our basketball kicks or put on a football helmet, we started we start developing tangible skills that focus the, the hard part sometimes is people don't know how to transition those exact same developmental skills into their everyday life right. and it seems like even though you probably didn't have a plan B but you knew that you already had what it takes to be successful exactly. how were you able to take those tangibles that you develop from being not only this remarkable football player but this remarkable man and transition it into where you are today yeah absolutely I, I think that you got to fall to learn how to walk. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. So I think it sometimes took my failures, even if it's professionally, mm -hmm. turning in a project and, and getting it back. You know, <laughs> exactly. you need to take care of this, that, exactly. you know, so learning how to take care of the small details. Mm -hmm. You know, it's me um, understanding the power of just being consistent. Okay. And if I'm going to speak something and, and stand on a platform and say who I am, I got to walk through that. Absolutely. Because I, if I say I, who I am in front of these cameras and you, and then later on at night, you know, <laughs> yeah. my friends exactly. or whatever I want, then, I mean, then who really am I? Yeah. So it's really understanding the big picture, you okay. know, and, and how I want my legacy to be remembered. You know, when I leave here, how do I want you to talk about me? You know, so it's every day writing my story and finding ways to write the perfect story. And even if it's not perfect, it's going to be the best story I could possibly write. Because it's your story. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, talk to us now. I mean, you're still in the industry, right? <laughs> just, on, <laughs> just on a different side of it. Um, how did you get involved with you're with the Rams now. Right. How did you transition? What Walk us through that journey. How did all of this come about? Yeah, I, man, you talk about the, the power of purpose, right? Mm -hmm. and, and faith and believe it or not, it is where I got me where I am. So after I got injured, I, I was blessed to have um, the Green Bay Packers reach out mm -hmm. and ask me to come back and you know, be a part of a rotational intern, internship wow. where just pretty much bouncing around from different departments, learning the organization. Uh, during my time there, I was advised to create a LinkedIn I was like, all right, whatever yeah, you said, yeah, I'm right. right? So y'all know more than me. So um, I created one, and two weeks later, Notre Dame um, senior athletic director messaged me. Hey, asked about you. We'd love to have you come out for a weekend. Wow. Came out on a Friday. They offered me a job on Sunday. Wow. 
I was like, okay, take a leap of faith. I go out there. While I'm at Notre Dame, um, the Rams reached out. Um, Kevin Dimoff, um, COO of, of, of the Rams, texted mm -hmm. me. He's like, hey, we're coming back to LA. You know, if well, if you want to be a part of this organization, let's jump on a call and talk more. Gave him a call. Uh, came out here and meet meet a few members of the organization and prayed about it. And I was like, you know, what? it's time for me to you know return home. Yeah. So. I don't know if everything was destined. I actually, it I is. Believe, I believe it is. It is. It is. You know, Definitely. Forgive me for saying that, but I am where I am for a reason. I got injured because I have a bigger calling. Absolutely. You know, you talk about the story. You talk about purpose. You mm -hmm. talk about I'm back in my city to inspire these youth or inspire these communities that it's bigger than just sports. It's yeah. bigger than a neighborhood. It's bigger than your situation. Absolutely. Sometimes it's bigger than you yeah. because we put ourselves in this box and we're way beyond our box and our limits that we put on our life. So. Yeah. I am where I am. If it's faith, if it's me working hard, if it's my story, yeah. if it's me choosing me mm -hmm. and knowing I'm good enough for anything, that's where I stand where I am and I sit with you right now and I'm excited about that and yeah. I'm excited about the changes I can make in this city. Definitely, definitely. And, and what is your role with the Rams right now? Yeah, so I have an opportunity to help in our community if it's build our partnerships or, or in a sense just develop the youth in high school football and develop the game from yeah. character and from the game itself. Absolutely. That's that's amazing. And so you're right. That is your calling because you embody character. So right. and especially when it comes to our community, there's not too many people that look like us that's trying to do what we're trying to do. And so we, we can attest to this. Sometimes we need to be able to identify by just a simple touch. I need to be able as a young youth to say, hey, he's doing it. He looks like me. He talks and walks the way I, I, I talk and walk. I can do it, too. And Correct. still to be able to have contact in some capacity even knows like if I was a 16 year old and I got a chance to have let's say a five minute conversation with you there will be no excuse from that point on for me to be a failure because I was able to make a connection with somebody that had already walked in the shoes that I'm about to walk right. in and so that's what makes that significant I mean now you being the man that you are and the platform you created for yourself what are some of the struggles that you may deal with now what are some of the obstacles that still face you yeah I, I just think that just just understand failures are lessons, mm. you know, and I don't know it all today. <laughs> you know, I think sometimes if it's being in the NFL or assumed as a successful pe person, you mm -hmm. expect it to know it all and do everything perfect. And it's understanding that I still got so many things to learn, you know, and not being satisfied and not being content, you know, regardless of what project happened, what partnerships we have or what event I put on, there's always so much work to do. Absolutely. And it's consistently reminding myself of that and, and always just developing my skills, even my strengths. You know, yes. how can I be better? How yeah. can I take some time to read about, you know, just the mindset or just Absolutely. having conversations? So um, it's every day just building tools. And I think that's the, I wouldn't call it a struggle, but just the biggest challenge. The biggest challenge? Yeah, yeah. It's Absolutely. Every day just growing Absolutely. and developing and just being the best. Got you. Um, what would you tell let's say the 16 year old you, if you were to have wow. a conversation with them? I would say um, you're good enough mm. just by being you. You don't need no boy, no girl, need no money, no fast cars, no fame. Just by being you and the skills that you have, you're good enough to do whatever you want. And all you have to do is believe it. Absolutely. And say that I can and I will accomplish it. And, and life isn't perfect. We have our ups, we have our downs, but as long as you stay focused on to where you want to go and have that vision and make the choices that align with that vision each and every day, mm -hmm. then you can accomplish whatever you want. That's amazing. That's amazing. If we were to fast forward three to five years from now, what would you be? Oh, Take wow. <laughs> Impact on the life. Okay. Our lives, I would say. I, I don't have no picture-perfect story, job, or yeah. I just want to impact the world. Absolutely. And if it's me being in my role forever, I mean, only the man upstairs know which I believe and uh, I just want to impact the world and I, I don't need a million dollars to do that. I don't need fam. I, I'm just felt that I'm sent to make a difference Absolutely. and show that it's okay to be who you are and regardless what you look like and how you talk and where you come from. Jonathan, that's amazing, man. Um, you're more than welcome to be a guest on my show. I would love to have you again so you can share some, some tools to help these young uh, student athletes navigate and better prepare for life after sports. But in the meantime, let uh, all our viewers know, where can they find you? Find me at jfrank2308, Twitter. Appreciate y'all for viewing. Be you, choose you each and every day. And for the rest of your life, regardless how young, how old, that will always be good enough. There you have it, Jonathan Franklin. I'm Jabari K. Smith, and you are viewing the professional athlete. Until next time, stay positive, stay productive, and stay present. I'm out.
Yeah.